as much as I can under my like my backpack and stuff like that. But like you know how like there's gonna be like little backpacking excursions and stuff like that. Like yes. obviously I'm not gonna want everything that I'm bringing to be in that backpack for that one to two day backpacking excursion. Uh-huh. So I guess my question is like outside of food being brought in like a storage tote, how should am I bringing like a duffel bag for some other sh- stuff? You know what I mean? Or like um, yeah, outside of the backpack, like where? Else? Or are we just gonna like? This is my seat in the bus. You know, These like stuff's gonna take, retake out my backpack. You know what I mean, like stuff like that. Yeah, because I feel like, I mean, if you're taking like a have... like a two or like three day backpacking trip, like you're not gonna need all the all of my you're not gonna space. need all the things you would need for the rest of the month. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was, I was thinking that as well. Yeah, and then like another thing I also I have is um I do have this duffel bag that can literally fit my backpack in it because it's supposed to be made for like. If I was taking my backpack like on a flight or something, so like you know what I mean, like one of those carrying ones that have like the side extra room on the sides, like is that an option? What are size limitations? There, yep, yeah, this is great. Perfect. All right, so the sense of, uh, of bulk food securing and uh, and toting is pretty much this. Um, that's a that's like a medium sized tote bag. It's a yeah. little bit bigger than a large shoe box. Um, you want one with a locking lid, and you definitely want one with a lid, period, and a clear sided or like translucent one where you can kind of see stuff like, oh, I got my favorite granola bar down in this corner. I can just dig straight to that instead of like unloading the whole thing and looking for something. That tends to be the most successful approach. The translucent ones tend to be a little bit more. Um, brittle yeah so this this tote may not survive this trip we're gonna be hard charging um, and so forth so less commonly accessed items like like dinners Mm -hmm. Uh, taken out of the cardboard box repackaged down into something durable usually that clear side ziplock bag yeah Uh, a whole bunch of those and um, like bulk purchases of your favorite kinds of granola bars with hopefully as much variety as you can find so you don't get sick of it there and then load the day stuff uh, lunch ones. Um, next and then for your expedition pack you kind of don't want to throw stuff in there because to the extent possible we need your expedition pack to not be contaminated with a bunch of melted chocolate in bear country okay I- so bears are a concern on this trip much more of a concern um, locally to us inside your pack are actually mice. Mice will destroy a $500, $1,000, $150 pack that you get on sale uh, in a matter of minutes. And they will chew through 1,000 denier nylon that like seatbelt material silently as you're sleeping right next to them. Uh, it's, it's happened to me, it's happened to everybody. So yes on a tote, that will stay on the vehicle pretty much all the time. You'll bring some food in your day bag and in your pockets, that kind of thing. Not so much in your expedition pack. And that'll get us pretty where, everywhere we need, pretty well everywhere we need to go. Um, and again, I'll be able to stop us at grocery stores and stuff like that along the way to uh, uh, restock on like the fresh goods and stuff like that. So I don't get scurvy or whatever. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit more about food. Um, mainly, the only stuff we really have to avoid on food are refined carbohydrates with no fiber. Uh, we've had to take a to the emergency room um, for what turned out to be an impacted gut, basically super duper constipation. We get this, nice. this plug of dried poop that blocks up everything else. And if it's been four days since you've had a bowel movement, um, you're not feeling good and your intestinal tissue starts to die off around that. Like it starts to necrose inside your body and decay. Um, so with that student, um, there's, a, there's a lengthy diagnosis process and um, it is an emergency diagnosis because if that tissue starts to necrose, they gotta cut it out and like string together what's left. Um, and this happened on summer camp to one of our students on our Western itinerary. Like, we're gonna get dehydrated if we're not paying attention to this stuff. We're gonna get impacted guts if we get dehydrated. And we're also eating low fiber foods like ramen noodles. So ramen noodles will kill you on this trip. Um, anything, anything though, food-wise, where you can 
like look at it and see the original raw ingredient and identify it like granola bar that's like clearly almonds and cherries and walnuts and stuff like that just like pressed together with a little bit of honey to make it all stick um, that's perfect that's perfect it's delicious I don't really get tired of those flavors um, it's enough fiber it's enough complex carbohydrates and a little bit of like nut like tree nut oil uh, to provide calorie density and stuff like that cashews that sort of thing um, super important stuff we're going to be burning a lot of calories um, on any field day where we're above tree line and on the hoof like hiking around doing stuff the expectation is on the low end that we'd be burning 5,000 calories a day uh, nice. topping out around 7,000 for a full ex a full excursion backpacking trip up at up at elevation um, and your body your body can't physically absorb and store more than about 5,000 calories a day. So you're necessarily running at a deficit in those moments. So we're looking for wholesome, calorie dense, cheap foods. Like the more refined and processed it is, um, you know, typically the more expensive, the easier it is to cook, but um, the less good it is for you, the more problems it's going to Oh, we just have this arc candy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to borrow something down the hall. Yeah. Uh, this so yeah, would recommend going to International Grocery, for sure. Would recommend going to the Neighborhood Co-op. Um, would recommend going to Aldi's in that order. Expressing food quality as nutrient density, not calorie density, but nutrient density per dollar spent. International grocery, yeah, you can get some frozen fish heads in bulk, but they also have a whole bunch of really good stuff from all over the world. Um, like curry mixes, gato gato mix. Um, they have an entire aisle longer than these benches of different ramen flavors. Don't get ramen. Don't get around, just don't even bother with it. It is deep fried flour. Chemically speaking, it is pure refined sugar. It doesn't taste as good as pure refined sugar does. But um, there's, white flour is, is refined sugar. There's nothing to it. Um, and that will get you that constipation. So, um, neighborhood co-op is really, really good for wholesome, whole ingredient foods, less processing and stuff like that. And, ethically source foods um, but it's kind of expensive so to the extent that you can hit up the bulk bins at neighborhood grocery and get like three pounds of each of the different trail mixes and then like sell two of those three pounds to each of your friends at cost or whatever and everybody gets a good variety of really healthy stuff and it's cheap when you buy it in bulk because you're not paying for packaging or inks or fancy shipping or anything like that it's just like buy the scoop you know um, that works really well, that's what I do. And I haven't died yet on summer camp. I mean, as far as I know, it's possible. Anyway, uh, up from there, Aldi is a good, you know, it's a reasonable grocery chain. Um, I think it's originally German-based. So, I have some really good stuff. Um, and generally some good deals. Food's just very expensive right now, so I'm, I'm going a little bit harder on food than I normally would. Um, Schlecks and Kroger, Kroger especially is is good food, high quality stuff, but it's so expensive for like the same brands you get somewhere else. Um, so I can't really recommend Kroger very much unless they have something that nobody else does. They have a pretty good log logistics chain though. Um, so if you can't find something somewhere else, check Kroger as the last good alternative. REI is awesome and it has specifically stuff like Backpackers Pantry and you know, if you need a 10 pound tin of like freeze dried eggs for whatever reason, <laughs> disgusting, but good, you know, if you're in a nuclear fallout situation. Um, yeah, they're just really expensive. Like, we're, we're shooting for like a dollar or less per meal, which is possible, but it takes a little bit of planning and, and foresight and buying in bulk and being proactive about this stuff. 
not $15 a meal like a lot of these backpackers pantries things are. Um, I've seen them as high as 18 bucks a meal. It's like, it's like steak at a nice restaurant expensive, you know? And freeze dried food is fine, but it's not steak at a restaurant, you know? Uh, if I were a whole year person, it would be. Anyway, um, so that's kind of the, the suggestion I have for local stuff. Um, but there are a lot of really cool online, like mom and pop organizations that do a bunch of like their own like meat stick packaging or like home dehydrating, for example. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah I have, totally uh, recommend dry foods, 100%. I have, I have access to a dehydrator. Oh. Uh, I was probably going to dehydrate like some fruits to make like little fruit yeah. snacks. Yeah. Uh, and then I was also probably going to do like my own. I have access to a dehydrator and a vacuum sealer. Yeah. Okay. So, I can like, dehydrate it and like, it up. That's and it'll last good. forever. So it's not That's really cool. Close enough, yeah. yeah. So, if you guys want, like, just shoot a message. Yeah, we should make like a rec, uh, rec summer camp group show. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like, Sam and I live together, so we're kind of going to have some food. So, mm -hmm. I just plan on making us both. Like, That's what the thing I was just saying that. Go shopping together. We were just yeah. talking about that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so if you guys want to make a group chat in WeChat and get surveilled by the CCP or in like Snapchat and get surveilled by whoever bought Snapchat, yeah. um, if you guys can make two, this would be so awesome. One for like all of you and then one for all of you plus me. So you can have like, <laughs> like the funny, like, okay. you know, and be connected with each other, that is hugely helpful because we're all gonna be in and out of reception and stuff like that, but sometimes we need to coordinate communication between vans and stuff like that. And um, like I need, a, I need a space without me in it that you guys can be honest with each other for safety purposes. Um, like if there's something that somebody's intimidated about bringing up in front of old man Dr. Park or whatever, like you guys can help address that with each other. Um, or make it okay for that person to bring it up with me if they're, you know, worried or intimidated or something like that. Um, like, you know, one year we had a student o overdose in Moab, uh, and they were comatose <laughs> on the sidewalk. It's oh, funny shit. now, but it was sorry, very intense not. at the time. I'm oh, sorry. And um, and I didn't hear about it until it was like well beyond too late because the students were like, oh my God, Dr. Park's gonna kill us. It's like, no, I really need to know this yeah, stuff so I can like help get this person to a hospital. Um, like that's literally what I'm here to do, to help keep you guys safe. Um, so two group chats would be awesome. Just roll me in on one of them. I don't right, care. That works. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, let's see, what else? That's the main stuff for food. Please, 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 just buy in bulk, buy in bulk, buy in bulk, repackage down. Um, anything that's in a cardboard box, the cardboard box is not gonna survive. So Ziploc bags, uh, strongly recommend like portioning things out so that at the end of a tiring, hard day, you can just reach into your food stuff sack blindly, pull something out, dump it in, make a one pot meal, not even like read what's on the label, and it's good to go. Um, and then everything else is in its own single serve of black bag, all in like a gallon of black bag. And um, puncturing and spills have very rarely been a problem in that regard. Because those bags will be inside of your tote box and most will stack in the backs of the vehicles and under chairs and stuff like that. So, there you go. What else on food? Does anybody have any dietary restrictions? I'm not aware of any yet. But, yeah. okay. I'm vegetarian. Okay. Okay. Right on. Does anybody have any food allergies? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because uh, one of our friends has food allergies. Uh, he's super, he's actually allergic to much. But he's super allergic to peanuts. And every time we hang out, I always try to avoid like yeah. eating like, a granola bar, or, like PB&J with them or something. Or something. That is so being being sure. um, a being shy. If you're dehydrating stuff for Dakota, if you could use like yeah. a tray that has like, got a yeah. bunch of like absolutely. nasty ass pork grease yeah, on it or something. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Cool. Um, okay, so that's the only good thing for food. Yeah. I'm gonna eat so much meat, like it doesn't. <laughs> no, I'll do my best. No, yeah. They grow my veggie burgers on the steak burgers. So. <laughs> <laughs> you 
your appetite if you were like most people on this trip and on most sort of uh, adventure or intensive work type trips your appetite is likely to work like this this graph right here so if this uh, horizontal line or axis is your typical or nominal appetite usually for the first day or two or three it's gonna drop way down as your body is doing things you know, hiking with a heavy loaded pack on, um, chainsawing work, uh, wildland fire drills, whatever. Um, you tend to kind of shut down a little bit at first and then your body recognizes, acclimates, and then revs up to whatever the new caloric ingestion need is. So um, if we're doing this right, you're not gonna lose a ton of weight on this class. You're also not going to gain a ton of weight because you're eating what your body needs. So listen to your body a lot. If we are packed out with foods such that you always have a granola bar on you, except when you're sleeping in your tent in bear country, um, then it's going to go well for you. Like the moment you get hungry, have a half of one bar. And then 20 minutes later, have the other half of that same bar. And your blood sugar is going to be well-regulated relative to insulin levels and your energy level and your focus and your safety out there are just going to be genuinely better. It does make a difference. So think packable, think divisible and small versus like, I'm going to have this huge, gigantic, freeze-dried pork ribs dinner, you know, and not eat anything all day before that. That's a recipe for disaster. Same thing with water, especially out west. Um, the first week or so out west, I am going to be a water Nazi just checking in with people constantly of, hey, how many liters have you had today? Because your body sometimes telegraphs, hey, I'm really dangerously dehydrated as, gosh, I'm really hungry right now, or gosh, I'm just in a shitty mood right now. When the message is getting lost in translation, that can become a real safety issue out west, uh, especially if you've never been out there. So I'm not too worried about you, MASH, but for some of us other flat-footed flatlanders, it's gonna be an adjustment. So when we're in the desert doing backpacking, um, the rule of thumb is one to two gallons of water plus electrolytes every day. One to two gallons. So that's like that's like a quart an hour for an eight-hour day. That's gonna feel like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. And if water is eight pounds per gallon, drinking 15 pounds of water <coughs> each day, when you're hiking between water sources and you might see a water source every third day, that means we gotta be able to carry quite a bit of water. So we have six or eight, uh, six liter dromedary bags, in addition to the two to four quarts of water storage and accessible capacity that you're each gonna need. So, your backpack, your expedition backpack and maybe your day bag if it's a bougie one has easily enough space to comfortably and safely carry a gallon so one liter or quart on each of the side quick draws for your first half gallon and then almost all backpacks these days have a dedicated sleeve right behind your spine and shoulder blades for a 70 to 100 ounces so that's two to three quarts of water storage right behind your body. This is one of the most dense and heavy things in your pack, so it is right against your body, so it's not way out here and back flopping around like crazy. Flopping around like some malignant goiter or something. I've got a question yeah. about the water distribution on your pack. Um, my pack, so like basing it off, like, uh, like that analogy size right there, it's my bag. One quart. One quart, yeah. yeah. Um, my, I've got like, it's a Kelty. And I have like the big zipper kind of pocket things that hold like two of those. Okay. Should I put them in there? No. I, yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, yeah. So the question on where to store your water is an important one because it is very heavy and it will change the weight distribution on your pack quite a bit. So the farther from center line something is, the worse it is. Like if you drink everything out of this, uh, if you drink two liters out of here, that's four pounds that's not on this side that might still be on this side if you have other things here and say you're like your old V8 commercial. Yeah. Um, so the the heavier water bladder packets are always on the center line and they're always right against your spine uh, because your center of gravity is kind of right behind your navel. So 
as close as everything can be. It's gonna be vertical and right along your spine to transfer weight down to that specific spot. So in terms of that, so like I, So in terms of that, would you just suggest to have, because I have a bladder as well, huh? so would you just suggest for me when I like, when pack to just leave the bottles in the pack and close to the center line and close to the back as possible? Yeah. Which bottle? Yeah. And then like tent on outside of that? Um. Or tent inside of that? If they're empty, it doesn't matter where the bottles go. They're very, very light. Yeah. If they're full, the tent and the big, the heaviest of those will be against your spine. So usually that's the water bladder, then the tent, then other smaller water bottles okay. off axis to the sides and those quick drops. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's about it. So the last place you want to do any of this stuff is when you're at a real cowboy, you uh, basically just carabinered to like a, a posterior loop, a gallon jug of water, and it was swinging back and forth the whole time. Uh, we made it about halfway through camp and had to stop because of a back injury. I wonder where that came from. So, uh, at the other end of this process, we are gonna be in a couple of places, and if you decide to go on a longer distance, self-supported backpacking trip, you may need to use what are called wag bags. Um, in desert environments where the soil microbe activity is too low to process human waste into fertile soil, um, you know, we can actually kind of sterilize and bleach the soil with the ammonia in our urine alone, for example. So this is basically a, an unfolded diaper in a double wall, like NASA tier mylar sack with a bunch of odor neutralizer and a bunch of silica to keep the sloshing down, shall we say. Um, so we'll have access to these when we need them, and um, in this way, uh, we'll be fairly light on the land when the land has extremely little ability to cope with our inputs, so to speak. So there's that. Everybody wants to put together a very uh, comprehensive toiletry bag, and I don't mean like mascara uh, for that look or that glow. I mean like wiping front back. Um, so that's typically going to contain toilet paper and some kind of, um, usually folks often opt to bring a, not just a wet wipe, but a sterilizing wet wipe, like wet ones brand, um, which contains something like benzalkonium chloride, which will help. To, it's, it's kind of a rough surface dis disinfectant. It's not great for your skin used continuously long term. But once every day or two to kind of reset the, uh, the funk counter um, is, a, is a really good thing. Um, any feminine care products will go in that as well. And this whole toiletries bag, since wet ones and so forth, tend to A, not be biodegradable or flushable, and B, tend to have some kind of a fragrance on them. They count like food. So they're gonna go in your food bag, yeah, exactly. And that's gonna go in a bare locker or bare bag over a branch or something. What areas would be there? All of them. Yeah, even in most of the desert country where um, we don't typically think of black bear habitat, like at Canyonlands, um, they had to shut down camping in basically a third of one of the districts because bears were just all up in that entire drainage and there's not really any other place for them to go except for right on top of those tent sites. And so they were just working the sites one by one didn't have any other options, so they removed the human temptation from it. Um, but yeah, everywhere in Colorado, pretty much, everywhere in Utah, pretty much, um, except we're on like downtown Moab or something, but there the human wildlife is the much bigger safety concern. Um, yeah, so we're on, we're on full bear protocol the whole time out west, pretty much, um, and that'll take care of mountain lions and bears and snakes we handle separately. They're not really after our food. Um, we just more encounter them. So, so. Other questions about bears or food more generally?
we will be getting water. Um, for the most part, half of the time or more from treated water sources, mostly at national park sites, like uh, Arches National Park will, will camel up, meaning fill up all of our everything. We have four seven gallon uh, jerry cans. I have those six, six, six or eight, six liter um, dromedary bags. We'll fill up all of our Nalgenes and stuff like that at the visitor center at Arches National Park because there's just not a lot of other places to get water there. Um, and everybody else is doing the same thing. So like there's just like banks of water fountains and water spigots and stuff like that. And everybody, everybody does that. And then we're good for a day or two. Um, not those sites, like, but like, um, I just remember like your listeners coming on with the purification. Yes. Whether it's tablets or those ones, yeah. like what your personal favorites, what you recommend. Sure. Like okay. Um, for pure vessel, for posterity, here's our grocery list, kind of in increasing order of bouginess. International Grocery Store, Neighborhood Co-op right next door, Aldi, Schnucks, Kroger, and as a last resort, REI, freeze-dried food. All right, moving on from there. Um, preferred, for my personal choice, preferred water purification skills are carbon and ceramic filter. Carbon element removes uh, dissolved nastiness like um, insecticides, fertilizer, somebody's sunblock if, they're, if they were swimming in the water hole that you are refilling from, and a ceramic element that has pores small enough to catch most viruses and so forth, bacteria. Uh, uh, you, uh, just a yeah. kind of side note here. Um, there's a brand called Sawyer. Sawyer. Uh, I just recently learned that 90% of the retail price of that goes towards. They have so like the largest slum in the world is in uh, I think like Nigeria, Africa. Um, they do. They have a Sawyer Foundation, and 90% of everything Sawyer brand. Yeah goes towards that foundation. Oh. Uh, there's like 400,000 people and only like 72 bathrooms in this area. Oh. Like not a single clean water source. Um, they've provided filters and water, like clean water, like accessibility to like a hundred, to like a quarter of the people. So, yeah, it's just. That'll be the first right now. Yeah, just, and they also do, I don't know, if you know, Dr. Park is cool, this one, but. Uh, like permethrin treating. They also do permethrin. Oh, but they're not permethrin treating water. No, God. Okay. No, no, no. Like, like, uh, like they just their brand. Yeah. Like they sell like permethrin, so you does, treat. and okay. like that also goes towards the foundation. Like everything they sell goes, goes towards, towards the foundation. That. Yeah. They and they have the uh, they do water filters too. So they're basically get water from like uh, death. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, this like, is oh, tiny. Why nervous. is my face feel numb? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Mr. Pork, what'd you do? Oh. All right, so yeah, we got a couple of uh, usual suspects with water filters. You need to read the label, um, yeah. and you need to you need to do a little bit of research. So, for example, a lot of students will ask me about a light straw, yeah, which is about a twenty dollar, essentially single use, non backflowable, non field serviceable, single element filter, yeah. um, which will get most of the bigger nasties out. Um, but once it clogs, it clogs, and you just landfill it. With uh, like an MSR Waterworks 2 type filter, uh, it's completely field serviceable. You can fix blown seals with stuff like chapstick. Um, it's meant, it's uh, cast, molded in polycarbonate. Um, you can heat it off a cliff and it'll be fine, generally yeah. speaking. You might have to replace the ceramic, but. Um, anyway, those are really good. They last for, they're good for high hundreds to low thousands of gallons. Okay. Um, they have a pre-filter and stuff like that. Uh, I guess um, some of the pure filters are almost that good in terms of safety, but they're not as field serviceable. Okay. So you just get what you pay for, really. Um, I guess my next question is like tablets. You don't think they'll be necessary if you have one of those filters, or still get tablets regardless of the yeah, so each person should carry two different or independent of each other methods of making water safe. And that can be as simple as boiling, which is slow and consumes a lot of fuel. 
And when we're at elevation, you're going to have to burn it or boil it for a long time because it boils at a much lower temperature. Um, but tablets like, um, uh, I think Pure makes Katahdin tablets. They're basically a powdered form of bleach um, and like an effervescing material to help bubble oxygen through the water. Oxygen is a good sterilizer as well. Um, you can get a Myox pen, which is a battery powered quartz bulb, and you UV the bejesus out of anything swimming around in there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, but for me, since you asked about my order of preference, I go with the filter first because it's active. You can get it in a couple of minutes instead of waiting 20 minutes or a half an hour or an hour or more with some of the different things. Um, if I if I know that I have to treat a lot of water, like I'm setting up a base camp while I'm remote, mm -hmm. I really like Aquamira. Made by Magnet. It's a, it's a pair of eyedroppers. And you do seven drops of A, seven drops of B, um, let those mix, let them sit for a couple of minutes, dump those 14 drops into one quart of water, swirl it around and make sure it's good to go and swirl a little bit on, slosh a little bit onto the threads um, to make sure that those are treated as well. And then let it sit for half an hour. Um, I hiked the entire AT, about 2200 miles using like that Aquamira back in the day. Okay. And it worked fine. It makes it just taste like tap water. It's a chlorine oxygen based sterilizer. Awesome. Looking up. Um, filters weigh between one and two pounds. Um, chemical treatments weigh up to a couple of ounces total. Um, not quite as fast. And um, generally speaking, your group is going to have a cook kit, so stove, pot, and pan, and stuff like that. So if you need to boil water a quart at a time, you sure can. Okay. Um, but you don't, if you boil, do not put boiling water into an algae. You gotta let it cool first. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be drinking a lot of plasticizing agents. Uh, they don't make them with bisphenol A anymore, but there's like 200 chemical analogs that they do still use of bisphenol A. So those are hormone disruptors. Don't want that. Other questions about water? So we we'll get our list of preferred water treatment brands and methods. All right. What else? minutes about um, not so much safety and survival stuff we've covered most of those pretty well uh, and we'll get into a whole bunch of more particular techniques with those like different knots and bends and lashings to use with your tent um, let's just talk about some of the kind of quality of life and sanity stuff things that help morale when we're two weeks deep and only two showers deep um, something like an extra this is this is overkill for each of us um, but I have a car battery sized lithium battery that I can charge a bunch of phones off of. I need to keep some charge in place for like emergency purposes. But you guys are welcome to the rest. We'll be bringing 200 watts of solar panel as well um, and some small ones. And I'll do my level best to keep everybody's cell phone charged for, you know, social media and stuff like that and so you can, um, you know, watch friends on Netflix or something. Um, but a uh, personal inverter is a good idea. It's a personal inverter? Yeah, and a cable that is labeled for it. That says, this is Sam's USB-C iPhone cable, whatever. Um, everybody's gonna be all up in everybody's business for charging cables and stuff like that, and we'll all be swapping around. But at the end of summer camp, I don't want you to have that sinking sensation of, man, I haven't seen my charger in two weeks. Thing was expensive, lock on it. Um, so yeah, just label stuff, and that's cool. Um, in the buses, there are there are two 12 volt DC inverter jacks up front, and then two that sometimes work, sometimes don't. Under the table in the bus, there's a little card table um, as well. So some years those work great, some years they don't. We try to swap out the fuses and get them to work, but 
doesn't really work out. Um, but yeah, we can daisy chain those up to a point, at which point they'll blow the fuse on those DC 12 volt things, and everybody's, with each additional inverter plugged in, it will charge a little bit less rapidly for everybody. So um, just be kind. Generally, if you can, please keep your device on airplane mode um, and just like connect to the cellular network every once in a while, you know, to get plenty of updates and stuff like that. But if you're continuously using your phone like you do here, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna outstrip our ability to recharge it and everybody's gonna get a little bit grabby and itchy. So I don't want that to happen. Should be happy. Um, what else? Uh, other quality of life items. If you have a book that you like to read, bring that along. It's a good low power way to do things. Um, for headlamps and stuff like that, if you can please, 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 please get a headlamp that does two things. It swivels down so you're not like high beaming everybody. And B has a red light filter. It takes about 20 minutes for our rods and cones to reset to night vision each time we get blasted by somebody's halogen headlamp. And um, some of these headlamps are these days, I don't know why, but they're manufactured bright enough that they can damage retinas. And so if you're out there stargazing with friends and somebody rocks up on you and is like, you ask them a question and they swing their head at you and they blast everybody. Um, like that's not cool. We just wasted, you know, 20 minutes times however many people you've splashed. Um, not you, a hypothetical son. You guys would never do this, but somebody else might. Um, and this is kind of annoying because we're going to go out west where some of the international dark sky reserves are some of the darkest places in the lower 48. Um, so we'll be able to see the colors in the Milky Way and stuff like that on some of these clear nights as long as we don't screw ourselves up with our headlamps. So by all means, uh, it's your choice to get a headlamp that is USB rechargeable or one that uses like swappable batteries. It's just a question of do you want the more hassle form of recharging the USB and having to remember that to charge it during the day, or the more like ecologically wasteful form of swapping it out back? Um, a few questions about headlamps. Let's talk knives. Every yeah. year I get somebody who wants to bring a big old bow knife. You totally can. Um, right? I mean, if would not recommend a couple of specific forms of knives. Anything with a spring actuated blade or spring assisted deploy is going to be illegal in some of the states we're going to. Um, anything that's over about five inches and a fixed blade is. You're all familiar with Bowie knives? They look really cool. They're honestly kind of impractical. And especially the ones that have a hollow handle with like storm matches and six feet of fishing line you're never going to use and stuff like that like survival knives um, because that doesn't have a full time construction because the metal of the blade doesn't extend all into the handle it's screwed on um, those break like it's their job so definitely don't bring a big old pig sticker um, if you're a veterinarian this is sort of an obviated problem already but for the rest of us um, I hacked the entire AT with a one inch Swiss Army pocket knife blade and it was fine. It was, anything else is really sort of overkill. But if you need to feel cool, feel cool. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, it's your choice to bring chopsticks or silverware or just use your fingers. Just make sure to sterilize your fingers uh, for eating. And, um, or like eat with your right, wipe with your left, or whatever they do with some culture to whatever. Other quality of life items. Um, I have plenty of opportunities to like bring you know, bandanas with maps on them or get stuff in gift shops, that sort of thing. Uh, you kind of know yourself well in terms of your spending habits at gift shops and tchotchkes and mementos of your trip and gifts for family and stuff. Um, so that's, that's entirely up to you. Most folks bring, um, I'll hear a whole range of figures, usually anywhere from like 50 to 200 bucks for fun money towns we'll have a couple of days off and um, some folks will just want to relax and sleep through those days other folks want to go ham uh, or full send something fun and new so whatever your wiring or speed is go for it we'll get you to some pretty amazing spots might as well take advantage of them if you can
What other questions? We've been going on it for like an hour and 40 minutes. So if you're feeling kind of like glassy eyed and, and whelmed, that's okay. But uh, I'm here to answer any other questions you have. Recap of what I missed at the beginning. Sure. Uh, double wall tent. One and a half person to two person tent is good. Freestanding tent is good. Sleeping bag rated for 20 degrees or better. Um, your choice on an inflatable or foam sleeping pad. That sleeping pad is a separate thing from the ground sheet that goes outside and underneath your tent. I uh, would recommend both of those separately from each other. Um, you can use a down or synthetic sleeping bag, doesn't matter to me. Uh, it's relatively easy to keep a down bag dry out west for the most part, but if it does get wet, it will fail. Uh, use this for you. That's this is it. internal frame pack of at least 70 liters for your expedition pack. Bring a day bag and a 15 by 18 by 24 uh, tote for food as well. I have a 65 liter pack. Will it work if I try to cram some stuff? Yes. Okay. That would suck to have to buy a whole other pack to add five liters. Yeah. Plus, Nash has a 100 meter pack, so. Okay, yeah, just make him carry Yeah, I'm gonna make him carry everything for it. Uh, let's see, definitely wanna start thinking about, as we're wrapping up here with the set, um, definitely wanna start thinking about and you know, maybe letting me know if you are wired for uh, being a base camp and day hike person or a moderate sanity backpack person for opportunities like that or a gonzo agro backpacker to go on a more aggressive trip. Uh, does anybody have any strong preference on that? It does not affect your grade one way or the other, but there's a real range of opportunities, and so there's no one size fits all solution when it comes to doing this stuff. Right. Oh, here you go. Sorry. Well, I was just gonna say, I feel like I'm more like, I don't know, intermediate, kind of like middle of the range. Like I like the good views and stuff like that. I'm willing to, you know, go a while for those good views, but I'm not like, let's do the most extreme one possible and let's go as hard as we can for the next three miles. Like get no. lost for three days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Not so like much. That. Okay. What are your thoughts? I'm around the same boat. I probably lean more towards the. Oh, yeah, I'll disappear for a week. Oh, for the, I'm gonna stay at base camp though. Yeah. Okay. I probably, I'm in the middle, but I lean towards more that side than the other side, I would so say. So moderate to high. Yeah, okay. That sounds good. Right on. Um, yeah. Cool. If you guys have any other questions, um, I guess it's a little bit early yet to start that group chat, but. Yeah. Um, that's good. Yeah, just send me a text message. Did you guys all get the text message I sent out? I did, yeah. Good. Did you get it? No. Do I have your contact info? All right. Um, tell you what. Send me a text message with or an email. I imagine Nash is probably going to be in the same boat as me. Nash will probably no. be like, okay. yeah. oh. Nash might go like, <laughs> like yeah, I'll do literally anything, and then we'll be in the middle of it, and we'll be like, Sam, this is a mistake. That's right. That's bad. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It'll be good. Well, he was talking earlier about getting a D&D &D game going. Oh, us, yeah. So. I'd love to. Running oh the game gosh. tonight, which would be fun. But yeah, I'll probably bring a bunch of nerd stuff, like board games if we can. Preferably one without a bunch of tiny little pieces. What's your number? It is 628. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Roughly. Yes, 628. 303. Okay. 2799.